Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. We have the square root of a plus the square root of a squared minus 1. And we're going to simplify this expression and find something in terms of a. And I'll be presenting two methods. But before we get into the solution methods, I want to raise a question. Can this be simplified? Suppose a is equal to 4. Then we get something like the square root of 4 plus the square root of 15. Can we simplify this? Yes, we can write this actually as the square root of 10 plus the square root of 6 divided by 2. In other words, this expression can be denested. Or if a is equal to 5, then you're going to get something like this. 5 plus the square root of 24, which can be written as 2 times the square root of 6. And as you should know, this can be written as root 3 plus root 2. So, yes, it can be simplified or denested. So, let's start with the first method. This method is called no pain, no gain. Ready? Okay. We're going to call this expression, we're, we know or we kind of feel that this expression can be denested. In other words, can be written as the sum of two radicals such as square root of x plus square root of y. And we, we're going to go ahead and square both sides because we want to get rid of the radicals as much as possible. And this is going to give us a plus the square root of a squared minus 1 equals x plus y plus 2 times the square root of xy. Now from here, we get an equation. So when I say denested, obviously, I want x and y to be what? any two rationals, right? Because I don't want the square root of the square root of 2. That would be the fourth root, right? Obviously, you do want a rational inside the radical. So to be able to get that, I need to compare the rational parts to rational parts and vice versa. For example, in this case, x plus y happens to be the same as a because that's the rational piece. And the irrational pieces are supposed to be equal. In other words, this is supposed to equal the square root of a squared minus 1. That gives us a system of equations. Let's go ahead and write it down. x plus y equals a, and 2 times the square root of xy equals the square root of a squared minus 1. Now, how do you solve this system? Obviously, our goal is to solve for x and y, right? So let's go ahead and solve this as a system. I'm going to go ahead and just keep this as is and square both sides in the second equation. So we're going to square both sides one more time. And this will actually eliminate all the radicals. We're going to get 4xy equals a squared minus 1. So this is my system. Hey, I own it, right? Uh, and I want to solve it. And this is nice because everything is kind of linear or no radicals. And here's what we can do. We can actually go ahead and, first of all, from here we can solve for xy. That is going to be a squared minus 1 over 4. And from here, I can actually isolate and solve for y, y, write the y as a minus x. And then this stuff, I can substitute. Make sense? Right here. You see how that works? So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, plug in a minus x for y, set it equal to a squared minus 1 over 4. Again, remember, we're solving for x and y, uh, but x and y are interchangeable because of the plus sign. So it doesn't matter, right? This can also be y. Let's go ahead and distribute and turn this into a full quadratic, ax minus x squared is a squared minus 1 all over 4. And then we can kind of write this as x squared minus ax plus a squared minus 1 all over 4 equals 0. This is my quadratic, and you can multiply both sides by 4. It's totally up to you if you want, or you can directly use the quadratic formula. It's going to give you the exact same thing. It doesn't matter, no big deal. It's just a matter of reference okay whichever you like so x from here by using the quadratic formula is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared which is a squared minus this is the fun part minus 4ac a is 1 c is a squared minus 1 over 4 and this is where the 4s cancel out beautiful now when the 4s cancel out we kind of get the difference of a squared and a squared minus 1. So a number minus 1 less than the number, what do you think that's going to be? 1, right? So from here we get x equals a plus minus the square root of 1, which is 1, 
and then we can kind of write it like this. But why did we get two solutions, right? Because x and y work together, right? x and y are the solutions of this equation. So if you take x to be a plus 1 over 2, then y would be a minus 1 over 2, and vice versa. But it doesn't matter, because at the end, this is equal to the square root of x plus the square root of y. Commutative property, it does not matter. Make sense? So, as a conclusion, we get the following. The square root of a plus the square root of a squared minus 1 can be written as the square root of x, which is the square root of a plus 1 over 2, plus the square root of y, which is the square root of a minus 1 over 2. Again, we can switch these around. It doesn't matter. Nice? Maybe. Who knows? But if you go ahead and check it out, for example, for a equals 4, the left-hand side is going to equal the square root of 4 plus root 15, as you know from before, and the right-hand side is just going to be the square root of 5 halves plus the square root of 3 halves. By the way, why is this called denested? Because remember, we have nested square root, which means we have the square root of another square root. But right now on the right-hand side, we only have single square roots. That's why it's considered denested. Make sense? Okay. Obviously, this is not the exact same thing that I showed you at the beginning because you can make a common denominator or it already has a common denominator. You can simplify this, multiply by conjugate, so on and so forth. You get the idea? Hopefully you did. Great. Let's go ahead and proceed with the second formula because I think you're going to love the second formula. But again, I could be biased. And by the way, you could also check this for a equals 5. You should get the same thing. And pretty much for any value. Now, what is nice about this is that this is a general expression. So kind of like a formula that you can apply to very many situations. So here's what I'm going to do. Notice that with the example of square root of 5 plus 2 root 6, it's always nice to have a 2 in front of this. Because remember how we did this with a shortcut? We kind of find two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is 5. Once we find those numbers, we put the radicals around it, and then we're done. Easy, right? So we're going to do the same thing here. To be able to bring out a 2, I kind of need to divide by 4 inside, because the square root of 4 is 2, right? You got that? Now, I got the 2. I need to factor the, the inner radical. And I can do that pretty easily because look at that. a squared minus 1 is a difference of two squares. So I can kind of write this as a plus 1 over 2 and a minus 1 over 2. And that's exactly going to give me what I want. But I do need two radicals. Or you can think about it this way. Can I find two numbers whose product is this and whose sum is a? In fact, if you add these expressions, you're going to get a from here because one cancels out. Make sense? Okay, so perfect. This works nicely. So the answer is going to be the square root of a plus 1 over 2 plus the square root of a minus 1 over 2. Just like the first method, it's the exact same thing. Of course, we're solving the same problem. And this is nicer, isn't it? Maybe. <laughs> You'll get to decide. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.